Welcome back. This week, Lisa Faulkner's been giving you a taste of the great British seaside from the comfort of your sofa. Oof. Now, today, it's been the ultimate seaside treat, fish and chips. I'll share it, then. Let me have I some. I can't. Sorry, it's so good. So greedy. Mm. Excuse me, mouthful, mouthful. Really <clears> good. <throat> Lovely. So that is the food sorted, which is absolutely unbelievable. But what is the best drink to go with your fish and chips? Well, luckily, help is on hand with Ollie Smith. So, Ollie, drinks to go with his famous British favourite? Well, mm. do you know what? I think keep it fresh, keep it light. Imagine you're at the seaside. You want breezy, yes. glorious... Something that's sure, just... I've never had an alcoholic drink with fish and chips, actually. I don't Have you think. never? No. Are you really? a cup of tea kind yeah. of person, or are you a... No, I'm not. I think okay. I've just had, like... I'm not so sure. you could be turning porkies there, Michelle Humes. <laughs> no. Obviously, <laughs> I I've, be. I've definitely had a fair share of alcoholic drinks, but not with fish and chips. Mm. I think there's a long way to go, because uh, this particular one I've got is a stunning mm. bargain. It's 4 99 from Aldi. Vermentino. Cheers. cheers, indeed. Cheers, cheers. Mm. Vermentino. You want, basically, bright flavours to pair with salty flavours. And with fish and chips, oh, right. this is an absolute rocker. If you're a fan of Pinot Grigio, this is the stuff you need in your glass, and I cannot believe the price they're selling. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine, and folks, bargain. it is amazing. It's lovely, isn't it? It's so good. I think the wine buyer Mike James deserves a knighthood. He's, he's awesome. I don't work mm. with him. I just think he's done a great job on that wine. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Beautiful. And with, the, and with Wait, the fish, where's this from? This is Aldi, and I think with fish and chips, if you're having something that's light and easy, yes. that goes an awfully long way to pair up with the brighter flavours in the I'm dish. I'm just going to try a chip and make you've sure you've got to do it with the tartar <laughs> as well. It's Friday. Friday, right? Mm. Fish Friday. Fish Friday. It has to be done. The other option you can have as well is fizz. So that's a brilliant option if you're having a very salty plate of fish and chips. Bubbly, I've got here an English sparkling wine from Marks and Spencers, which is called Marksman. Uh, bubbly goes with the crunch of the batter amazingly well. If you imagine that kind of crispiness, yeah, yeah. the bubbles in your booze do exactly the same thing. And this one here uh, is 26 quid. English sparkling wine, if you're feeling like a splash out, is amazing. Oh, that's lovely. Cracking, isn't it? That's really nice. That's really good. Six, just Up to date. <laughs> I know it's not bad, is it? I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> there are incredible good value options as well though carver from spain prosecco from italy you don't have to spend a fortune but if you're feeling patriotic this in your glass and the heat wave mm. my word the summer's all yours Beautiful. it's glorious yes. <laughs> we're Love enjoying that. it today, aren't we? it's really good i'm it's... like it's five o'clock somewhere this is fine <laughs> <laughs> it's five o'clock i think yeah we're over the yard i'm nearly yeah <laughs> i think they're one of my all-time favorite matches i mean i love my wine and i think there's some great value vino out there yes but i think with a great plate of fish and chips mm -hmm. cracking english beer it's mm. awesome because of that extra richness. You've got the bubbles yeah. for the crunch. It can handle all those sauces, all the tang of the tartar. Really hearty then, isn't it? It's hearty. And I've got an amazing one from up in Bakewell called oh. Jaipur. Okay. And it's made by Thornbridge Brewery. Yeah. I think they're doing an incredible job. Thank you very much indeed. That's Thank very kind. You. you could have a pint or you could have a little Thanks. cheeky I'm just Peroni. Put some vinegar or a on my chips whilst I'm, here. <laughs> I'm really going now, for it. <laughs> you're, are you a vinegar? On your I'm, I'm a drown it in vinegar. You know, when they, like the old school, when I used to get fish and chips after school, I yeah, used to yeah. have it wrapped so, and the paper used to be dripping, you know, with the vinegar and I used to have to go and get it back and wrap it again. <laughs> That's the thing, actually. I suppose the chips, there's not a lot of massive flavour to the chips, so it is oh, a vehicle, vinegar. really, for sauces and tangy yes, vinegar. Yes. Ollie, did you and I just smell the beer? We did. I can't believe we, we did it. We're not really we did, meant to do it, we? did. We? We're our lazy boys. We're just kicking <laughs> but, back and... Yeah, it's, <laughs> but it is, it's, it's really <laughs> enticing. You have changed. I oh, know. Like... Where's the South London <laughs> gone? Oh, <he's laughs> you have changed. Way. I think this kind of beer, though, to be honest, it has loads of aroma. It's really fruity stuff. You could absolutely have a pint of cheeky easy lager with it no problem at oh, all yeah it's quite sweet, what do you think too i'm, not, it really, is, I'm yeah. not really a beer person you know no. how's it going down like a little shandy yeah mm. it's not hitting the spot you're a bub you're an me. english sparkling yeah. wine person I, I stick to yeah. well this I one here i tell you what I, I mean i love it but i think you're exactly right there are so many options and i've got another one which sounds a bit odd especially in the heat wave mm -hmm. But a cup of tea. Good old English tea. Mm. Builder's tea. Good old yeah. Tetley's, Barry's, Yorkshire tea. They're all fantastic. If you really want to go celebrate, we've got Twining's Assam, which is a bit oh, posh. That is, that Very is posh. I've not got that in my cupboard. <laughs> that <laughs> is for sure. That is, um, you're getting builder's tea from my well, cupboard. <laughs> no problem with the builders. I think no. with fish and chips, especially if you're in the end of the pier and it's winter time, this is the kind of stuff you yeah. want. And don't they say if you drink a hot drink, in mm. the heat, I it's supposed to actually cool you down. I don't believe down. that. I'm not sure if I believe that, but apparently it's true. Apparently it's true. My grandmother always used to swear by that, but I think it was because she was distracting us on the beach in Bournemouth <laughs> with a thermos flask, just saying, the sun will come out, it will <laughs> come out one day. Uh, but no, I think Very the tea true. the tea and fish and chips, it's the classic. It's that yeah. hearty, yeah. textural, sweet, malty. And I tell you what, if you're having lashings of ketchup, that natural sweetness in yeah. the tea, belting. Very English. Love Absolutely. Love Couldn't be more Love British. Love Beautiful. Mm. But there is one other thing I've got to tell you about. I think it's the seasonal sip. And I really want to get Britain converted to this because okay. I'm loving it. Mm. And it sounds bonkers, but chilled red wine. Really? Chilled? Chilled red no, wine. I've never had that before. Have you not? Well, sangria. 
but that's you know but that's, 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 that's diluted fruits. is it? I've never had straight red wine chilled because I'm quite funny about my red I really like I love the whole room, room temperature, temperature yeah. thing and I you know, Marvin gets fancy at home with a decanter. We, we really, we go to it off. Do you know it? what? But I really also, like a glass of bread. any easy wine, whether it's three ninety nine or fifteen ninety nine, if you pour it into a jug or a decanter, it does open up the smells and bells. It mm. really yeah. does expand everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. top tip, man. And it looks it's better, brilliant. doesn't it? It feels class. He just, class. What we, we basically, one of our first holiday, we went a wine tasting, and he just thinks he's very fancy yeah. now. That's all. <laughs> I Let's think try he this. is. But I'll give it a go. We've got so children. Think of it like Butch Rosé. We've got first of all Pierre Tonquet from France, which is a blend of Merlot and. Carignan. Uh, it's £5.49 in Majestic, and I think it's a steal for what it is. Oh, that's nice. It's good fun, oh, yeah, isn't it? I like that. Sitting outside in the sizzling sun, barbecue it's on the go. It's not too heavy. It is nice. Crowned. It is yeah. good. You're right. The rule of thumb with chilled reds, light and fruity and young. You mm. don't want to kind of chill anything too savoury, too earthy, yeah. too old. Okay. That's the kind of kit that I absolutely Could love. Could do one more quickly? Absolutely. We've got the Yarra Valley uh, Pinot, Pinot Noir from Azurex Special, £7.98. Again, a complete steal from Australia. Light grape, Pinot Beautiful. Noir. Zingy, fun, it's just upbeat and it's a giggle. Lovely. And I think when you're at home in the sun, that's What's your wine of the week, Ollie? My wine of the week is my Pickpool de Pinot, from, okay. again from Aldi, Kraken Value for Money, okay. 6 99 oh, again? <laughs> And I would say, if you're somebody who loves Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Grigio, any of those light, bright flavours, yeah. oh, this is stonking me. value for money. Mm. Do you like it? Cheers, mm. cheers to summer, Ollie. Here's to summer. I Thank know. you so much, guys. Cheers, guys. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you very cheers. much. Cheers. Thank you. Well, that was lovely. I'm feeling a little bit... <laughs> oh goodness me right still to come you saw them perform earlier and this weekend they look set to be number one in the charts Rixton will be back for a chat a bit later and the incredible true story of how one man turned his life around through the companionship of his best friend we'll meet John and George after this break this is good isn't it Now, for years, John Dolan had been living rough, trying his best to get by with a drug addiction, time in prison, things just continued to get worse. That was until he met George. And both John and George are here now to share with us their incredible story. How are you Hello. doing, guys? Good to see very, you, John. Very well, thank you very much. I'm in <laughs> love with George, I have to just say. You quickly. and half of London. Uh, John, I know. Before we get into how you and George came together, let's go back to your early life. You was born and raised in London but uh, you was quite rebellious from a young age. Yeah, I grew up in Islin, uh on the King Square estate. I was brought up by my parents. Yeah. Um, everything was fine until about the age of nine when me dad took me into the bedroom after a drinking session one day and said, I've got something to tell you. Um, and he told me that he was my grandfather and like that he wasn't my dad and that me mum was me nan and it was so confusing and I was so young and right, it was so just... you're aware you, there was a lot of change and yeah, a lot of and stuff. Yeah, it, it was basically it. such a shock to a young mind that I started rebelling of course, really young. Of course, yeah. And then that escalated into your teenage so, years. Just and... abuse, bunking off of school. Um, then I started on cannabis in my teenage years and then, you know, like, but I, I'd never went to school if, if I could help it. Mm. I, and I really rebelled, started getting in trouble with the police. Uh, and my grandparents, bless them, had brought up four generations of kids and they didn't need the police knocking on their door. And right. from the age of 14, I was bringing the police to the door every week and it was just mm. getting too much. And by the time I was 19, they'd had enough of it. I yeah. finally got arrested, went to Feltham, came out and they wouldn't let me back. So by the right. time I was 19, I was homeless. Right. right. But, you, but you always had a passion for drawing, though. Yeah, always. Like, I'm a naturally gifted artist. My granddad was a great artist and it sort of uh, passed down the genes sort of thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I get it from him. I owe it to him, really, as well as a dog. And as you said, by the time you was in your sort of late teens, there, George wants to go. He can come and sit with me. Do you want to come and sit with me, George? Come on, George. Come on, up here. George, if he runs off, I'll get him back. I was saying, by the time you got into your late teens, you you've had well up to this date. He's all right here. He's cool. You've had up to three hundred convictions. You've been in prison thirty times. Yeah, I mean, I've done like when I do the time up, I've done eleven years of my life in jail, and I've been on the streets like for twenty years. Uh, on and off. Uh, I was in a revolving door, I was in jail, uh, homeless jail, homeless, and basically um, I didn't think I would ever change my life, uh, not to this extent anyway. Yeah. Uh, for many years I'd, I'd wanted to do that because uh, I'd embarrassed my family and like with all the stupid antics and the way I treated my grandparents. I wanted to make them proud. And, and I guess also for yourself as well, you know, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you, obviously you deserve yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when so tell me George, about when um, my come lovely here. best friend George. Well, <laughs> what happened was, is I was, oh, George, come here, come here. Oh, what happened was, is I was living in Tower Hill at the time and I was putting some homeless people up. 
<laughs> and uh, what happened was is they went out one day to beg. They already had a dog with them, so they them took me flat. And this dog, they'd gone out to do a bit of begging one day, and they'd come back with their own dog and him. While they was out, a mad Scotchman had approached them and sold him to them for the price of a strong can of lager. Oh, wow. And uh, they brought him back to mine, and then within a week, they got rehoused, and they said to me, uh, we're getting rehoused, would you like to look after him? And at the time, I was a tramp. I was injected heroin, I wasn't washing, I was in a really bad place. I right. wanted to kill myself every, every other day, road depression. Goodness me. And uh, I, I just took him on at the spare of the moment. Next morning, I woke up, I looked at him, I thought, oh, what have I done? Like, I could just about look after myself. But so, was, so Jules was a puppy at the time? His name was one. Oh, one, was one. And he was okay. a really rebellious dog. He was hand shy. If you <laughs> raised your hand, he'd, like, he'd flinch. Um, he, he'd growl at you, he was a cat chaser. You couldn't play ball with him because you'd lose your fingers trying really? to. Yeah, oh, yeah, really? Yeah, he was really. And he was, uh, you couldn't train, he was, I had to train him off the lead because you couldn't take him off the lead either. But then what would happen when you was on the streets and you was, you was drawing pictures of George, right? And, and yeah, uh, people shelling. was then starting to buy them? Well, what happened was I started sitting on the street drawing originally the buildings across the road from where I was sat. So you were drawing pictures of the buildings? Buildings, yeah. Right. It was a study, because I wanted to go to Hampstead to uh, draw the buildings and leave a calling oh, wow, card look, we could see there. Wow. in people's doors. That, that, that's uh, a slightly bigger picture that I'd done there of the Shoreditch skyline. It's brilliant, isn't that it? That sold for £3,000, that Goodness one. Goodness me! Wow. Yeah. Oh, my word! Had, like, my first show was a sellout, and oh. the queue went round the block, and it was a show with international street artists. They collaborated, Roa, Run, Thierry, uh, stick, uh, Citizen wow. Kane, uh, wow. some Goodness really me. top street artists. I love it, it you because say, you say it with such pride. I yeah. love that. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Well, would you say it's an immediate change because of George? Yeah, because the thing was, is when I got the dog, I, up to that point, I didn't know what it was in life I was meant to be doing. And I was at that crossroads where I was asking myself, why am I here? You know, what's the purpose in my life? And then what I didn't tell you is I'd got, been published in a book called Shoreditch Unbound two months after drawing on the street. I was right. published alongside Tracy Ewing and Gilbert and George and Boy wow. George. Wow. And wow. they said John Dolan, street artist, and that gave me the inspiration to carry on drawing, but right. not move from the I Street and go to Hampton, to stay on the I Street. There's also been a, a, another happy ending as well, because you've been reunited with some of your family. Your family, my friends, yeah. My family are turning up to the show tonight. Oh, so fantastic. If you're watching. Oh, fantastic. Um, yeah, turning up to the show tonight. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's all good. Where's your show tonight? It's uh, the old Griffin Gallery, Shoreditch High Street. Oh, wow. wow. So this, this right. story really is the ultimate turnaround. It really is. There. We were talking to, uh, I won't name him, but he was a, he's a top uh, Hollywood producer that made film with, well, he made Basic Instinct 2. He made George he's all right, he's all right, don't worry. Don't he, worry. Made, he made Basic Instinct 2, um, Rambo 2. Um, yeah, we were in talks with him at the Dorchester a few months right. ago. And you've had some um, celebrity customers as well. Yes. I've got, yeah, uh, Russell Brand is a fan of mine. Uh, Blair is a fan of mine. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. Oh, so, so you've gone big time now. <laughs> yeah, we're doing a show in Los Angeles at the end of the year. But the thing is, because I was so bad and I live such a bad life, I do a lot for charity now. Yeah. So, and all I'm you. doing is I've done stuff for UNICEF, I've done stuff for the Big Issue Foundation. And some of the proceeds from the show uh, and the pictures and the sale of the book are going to charity as well. So, and I'm working with, I'm drawing rock stars next year and their dogs, yeah. and I'm working with Battersea Dogs Zone raising Amazing. money. So, John, what's life like for you now compared to when you was on the street? It's changed so much, but I still sit out on the street. Do you? Yeah, but I don't sell me pictures from the street anymore. <laughs> okay, oh, cool. my goodness. Oh, well, listen, it's fantastic that you could be here today. Listen, it's been a really great so pleasure to, to meet you. I'm just George giving well. George a massage. I'm sorry, you got, if you can't see you. George is getting spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. I wish you continued listen, success. God bless. Thank you yes, very no, much. Thank it's been you a very great much. pleasure. It really has. Thank, thank you, John. You. Thank you. And if you've been affected by, sorry, I'm still stroking. If you've been <laughs> affected by anything we've spoken about with John, there's advice over on our website. Uh, now, Ryan is in the hub. Ryan, what have you got for us?